Well, hello, everybody. What What's going on, government seekers? Happy Thanksgiving. Happy genocide, or whatever this day is really about. Um, so thank you, everybody. This is a Government Secrets episode 104. Uh, like, share, subscribe, put this out on your social media. Or thank you. Hope you're having a nice holiday or wherever. If you're not celebrating it or you live in a part of the world, they don't celebrate it or you just don't give a shit. I don't know. Uh, I was watching the World Cup earlier. That was fun. Um, and then uh, I don't know. I, don't know. I might go surfing. And then I really want to try out the uh, Beyond Orange Chicken at, um, oh, what's that uh, chain of Chinese, <laughs> Chinese fast food? Panda Express. <laughs> That's going to be my big day today, I think. That's going to be my big day. Um, so hello, everybody. Hello, Holly in the chat. Everybody watching over at Rockfin uh, and the CIA tube. Uh, uh, please, folks, um, I have a, another YouTube channel called Graham Elwood Clips, where I just take clips of this government secrets, clips of my stand-up, and clips of my uh, political vigilante show. Uh, like I'll do a 10, 15 minute clip on th on this channel, but then I'll take like a two, three minute clip. So, so I'm just trying to get that up to a thousand subscribers. Cause then I can, I can monetize that channel since this, uh, <clears throat> my regular YouTube channel has been demonetized for almost two years now. Uh, so if you can, if you give a chance, go over to Graham, youtube.com slash Graham Elwood clips and just subscribe to that. Start liking the videos, all that stuff helps. Um, so yeah, all right, let's do it. Let's bring them on, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Government Secrets with the two most censored comedians in the world, Lee Camp and Crap Elwood. Boom! Holiday edition. <laughs> I didn't hear anything after the words beyond orange chicken. That was where it all stopped for me. Uh, should, should we all be hoping to get beyond orange chicken? Our entire lives, our entire lives have been about getting beyond orange chicken. <laughs> That's my goal spiritually is to get beyond orange chicken. That's I think true <laughs> enlightenment. When you transcend this lifetime, it's when you get beyond orange chicken. So I'm going to hopefully do that today with some veg, uh, veg vegetarian egg rolls. Gen um, General, General Sh Sal always said that. <laughs> General Chow always said you can just get beyond orange chicken. Uh, yeah, yeah, exciting day. Yeah, uh, uh, whatever you whatever you want to call it. What are people calling it? Truce giving, uh, indigenous slaughter day. Uh, whatever you whatever you feel. It's funny. Peta put out this awesome <laughs> this awesome cartoon of these people hovering over this chicken going i can't wait to drink its juices and it's or, or of a turkey that's like a live turkey looking at it it's just god i love pita they're just really just horror shaming people into becoming vegetarians it's fantastic <laughs> i love that each year you know i now i now i have a fear that we talked about this last year but i love that each year the president makes a big show of pardoning the turkeys while then going on to eat as many turkeys as possible. As possible as they possibly can. <laughs> Literally Just... having a presidential dinner where they have as much turkey as possible. But there's one we let off the hook. The other yeah. ones, oh, we murdered the shit out of them. We're going to eat them. <laughs> um, oh, man, we're going to eat them. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It's like this is – we talked about this last year, but, I mean, just we this is – Thanksgiving is so truly American in that the original version of it is horrific. It was like the pilgrims after they slaughtered in a native American village, they'd have a big feast or whatever. Like it's just <laughs> right. the history of it is awful. And then even in the attempt to whitewash it, like, Oh, let's get, let's like the, the, the concept of, Hey, let's have a, a, a day once a year where we get together, have a nice meal with people we care about and, and, and talk about what we're thankful for. That, that, that sounds like a fantastic concept. You know what I mean? Like, um, there's no religion involved. There's no gifts, but of course now America just makes it gluttony and shopping. You know, it just takes it to the, just overdoes it. Just, you got to stuff yourself. Yeah. You got to eat way too much. And then tomorrow you got to buy the shit out of everything. Like just <laughs> takes, even they take the whitewashed, 
genocide free version of this holiday and ruin that and even <laughs> they can't even do that right just can't leave even that just, alone can't even just have it be like look we'll all get together we'll have a family dinner we'll say we appreciate each other we'll ignore the fact that we killed millions of people they can't <laughs> have it just be that they were like how about also you go the next day and get deep in debt for the following six months and just buy stuff you don't need and trample each other for a discount. Like just this capitalist hunger games tomorrow is that like someone's going to die tomorrow. Like we know that someone's going to die tomorrow <laughs> at one of these things. Like that's a, that's buy a stuff you don't need and need stuff you don't want. That's the it's motto. Just, America can't help itself, but going over the top with everything. Like we just, Everything is funny watching the World Cup. And and the rest of the that's world a, is like that, that's a drink making competition, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a drink. It's yeah. a bunch of it's a bunch okay. of it's like uh it's like beer pong, Lee. It's just like beer pong. Oh, oh world right. Cup. World Cup, right. You you throw the ball in the cup. Yep. And then you get to the other guy drinks. Yeah. Um but even the World Cup like shines a light on the whole world calls the game football. We call it soccer because our football game only has four plays where we actually use our foot. But yet <laughs> we we decide this is football. Yeah. And this is the World Cup. The whole world plays in this. The whole world watches this. And we have the World Series, which is just American teams playing each other in a sport that most of the world doesn't care about. Right. Like, right. it's just... I feel partially responsible because my ancestor, I think it's still called football because it was created from, like rugby came from soccer and football, American football came from rugby. So we were kind of still, it was still in that family of like, we're like, well, this is our football. Right. And everybody's like, no, that's, that's a different thing. You came up with a different thing. Yeah. And Walter Camp did a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's right i love the fact that walter camp invented football it's so so great it's it's you like I, we've talked about this before you're the forrest gump of comedians you somehow <laughs> your family has been woven into every piece of history <laughs> not every piece it's just walter camp george washington robert e lee and lewis and clark other that. than that i mean Other most americans <laughs> It was no one. Lewis and Clark? Oh, this sorry, is you me. And Oh, I didn't tell you. It's actually just Lewis. It's not Lewis and Clark. Oh, well then, yeah. Fuck it. Fuck, forget it. That, that, that I makes... forgot to mention John Marshall, which is actually the one we're most directly descended from. <laughs> Lee, if I didn't know better, I would think you were some goddamn blue blood. You know what I mean? That's like... <laughs> Put in place like, by the Illuminati. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the shittiest blue blood that has ever, <laughs> ever been had. <laughs> like at any at any moment, couldn't you just make some calls and go, "Hey, I need to stop being throttled." Like just. Well, hilariously, so all of that's on my father's side, and my father came from like it's basically Florida rednecks. I mean. So even though you can be descended from these people and it's, you're not, you're not in the oligarchy anymore. It's just. So then is your, is your dad's side of the family, the original Florida man? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Totally. Totally is. So when you hear about some guy like throwing an alligator into an Arby's drive through window in Florida, you think uh, that's my, my family. My father's father, my grandfather was, so they were like, they were like, they had a house, but you know, they were, they were borderline uh, trailer park stuff from Florida. And he was a sale. He was a door to door salesman. He was uh, legit would go door to door and try and talk people into like buying like uh, oil lubricant stuff, like for their cars, <laughs> like for their cars. And, and had all these crazy schemes. He invested money into lifting the Titanic using ping pong balls. <laughs> <laughs> they were gonna pump people a ping pong ball. Like this is a far cry from Lewis and Clark. All right. Wow. Is I feel like this ping pong ball really should be a government secret at some point, Lee. Especially if you're, <laughs> you're 
families related to it. Like this feels like there's more to this story. <laughs> like the Army Corps that of Engineers that did not did not pay off. Oh, really? Yeah. The ping pong ball Titanic thing didn't didn't pay off. <laughs> have you have you seen the Titanic floating around recently? I have not. Oh man, damn it! I thought. Well, maybe we should start a GoFundMe and do the second, you know, the second Camp 2.0 Titanic ping pong ball. Yep. I, I listen. It's 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 never too late. Better late than never. <laughs> it's funny, like. I see why you like to focus on the fact that I'm a weirdo that has nunchucks next to his bed because then <laughs> we we don't have to learn about this stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I try and find something to take us down your path very quickly so we don't analyze my life. <laughs> this, I mean, nunchucks by the bed is a very practical safety thing if you're trained in that art, art form of weaponry. Um <laughs> But it pales in comparison to raising the Titanic with ping pong balls. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> Graham, can't 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 a man dream? Can't a man dream? Far be it for me, Lee, to, to 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 you know shit on a man's dreams. You want to raise the Titanic with ping pong balls? I'm all for it. I say you go for it, my friend. I say you go to your local Big Five sporting goods store and buy. Five million ping pong balls. Roughly and five million, yeah. <laughs> I really, God, I'm fascinated by this now. I really want to know what the, the the engineering and the science, the physics behind this plan was. I feel How like for it? that to work, you would probably need a complete Titanic ship resting at the bottom of the ocean, not right. just pieces. <laughs> pieces of it. Wow, this is, um, I mean... Do you get the ping pong balls and then tie them and then they float it above? Do you put them underneath? Like I'm sure, really, I'm really. Oh, I, I, I assume you got You got to get a really strong v pneumatic like vacuum hose and you pump them into the Titanic, thousands of feet below the surface of the water. And then eventually, once you get enough ping pong balls inside the hull of the ship, then eventually it rises up. This is fantastic. Uh, would it not, Graham? Uh, simple physics. Simple physics. Oh, I'm way more on board with this idea than when you first told me about it. I got to be honest <laughs> with you. Lee. I would assume you'd have roughly 14,000 men uh, blowing into hoses to propel the ping pong balls into the Titanic. Are they regular? Like, are they officially sanctioned like olympic ping pong balls are they specially made ping Each pong balls? ping pong ball is the size of a small house like a, <laughs> like a two story two story house so they're giant like in the original prisoner tv show yeah, like, like, ping pong ball was not the right name to use i feel like describing it by the way speaking of that we need to do i don't know that this counts as a government secret just an insane american secret there was a guy who considered himself an inventor and tried to create all these different like watercrafts and things. And one he came up with was a giant ball, like bigger than a room, like the size, really the size of a small house, that fabric ball, a canvas ball that you would get inside of and it would like blow you across waterways. So he built it and tested it in the... What 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 lake is uh, what what great lake is next to Chicago? Is it Michigan? Michigan, yeah. And and so he got in it, and I don't understand what kind of contraption was inside this giant balloon, but and the thing takes off across Lake Michigan, and lands like two days later or something on the other side of Lake Michigan. It's like scraps of canvas and a dead man. What and this man was your great uncle? No, unrelated to me. <laughs> he did have the head of Walter Camp in the balloon with him, though, <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a jar. <laughs> wow, this is a, that's a great that's a great little holiday government secret story, a little side dish of. Um... I wish I could remember the guy's name, but yeah, people should look up that story. 
Oh, that sounds fantastic. Well, let's get into our government secrets, Lee. Um, so I, we have two fantastic ones. Um, What do you want? To, do you want to go first? I don't care either way. Um, I'll, you know what? I'll I'll do mine. Mine is kind of a a brief. It's not a huge one. Yours feels like it might take a little longer. Probably, yeah, it'll take a while. All right, we'll do mine. So, um, government secrets segment number one. <laughs> The American invasion of Grenada. Um, so I remember this when I was a kid, the invasion of Grenada. But of course, there's stuff to it we did not know. Um, first, I will go into just what happened in Grenada. Uh, and it was it's it has a thanks some a, a slight Thanksgiving tie in. Um it began at dawn on October 25th, 1983. The United States and a coalition of six Caribbean nations invaded the island nation of Grenada, which is 100 miles north of Venezuela, codenamed Operation Urgent Fury by the U.S. military. It resulted in military... <laughs> yeah. Isn't that everything America does for Urgent Fury? Everything's an Urgent Fury in America. Just everything. The way people drive, all-you-can-eat buffets, I think, are, are Urgent Fury. <laughs> Dude, if I saw a buffet that said Urgent Fury, I'd be like, yes and yes. Just, that is happening. I got to get in there and get to the chocolate fountain. Ah, just. Um, so it was triggered by, uh, since, uh, since Thanksgiving is all about holiday tradition, you're going to see some American traditions laced in this story. Um it was triggered by strife within the People's Revolutionary Government, which resulted in house arrest and execution of the previous leader and second prime minister of Grenada, Maurice Bishop, um, and the establishment of the Revolutionary Military Council with Hudson Austin as chairman. The invasion resulted in the appointment of an interim government, followed by elections in 1984. So Grenada had gained independence from the United Kingdom in 1974. And this is the thing that's interesting. The, um, so we, I want to go into this real quick. The, the PRG, which is the uh, People's Re Revolutionary Government, uh, was proclaimed in 1979. So they became independent in 74 from, from England. And the People's Revolutionary Government was, uh, was proclaimed after the, get ready for it, Marxist-Leninist New Jewel movement overthrew the government of Grenada in a revolution, making Grenada the first, making the only socialist state within the Commonwealth. Um, I'm sure that has nothing to do with us. No, 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 no. That's never been a theme. We've never uncovered that theme that anytime there's a communist, anything or socialist, anything, America just comes in and says, Nope. Um, so, uh, so that was when, let me go back. So, uh, so basically a lot of it was, eh, we don't want Marxists in charge of anything. Um, so what happened in September of 1983, leading up to the invasion, an internal power structure began over Bishop's leadership performance. Bishop was president in a party meeting to share power with Deputy Prime Minister Bernard Coward. Bishop initially agreed, but later balked. He was then put under house arrest by his own party's central committee until he relented. When his secret detention became widely known, Bishop was freed by an aroused crowd of supporters. A confrontation then ensued at military headquarters between Grenada and soldiers loyal to Coward and civilian supporting Bishop. Shooting started under still disputed circumstances. Oh, this is Wikipedia's little line item. Um, <laughs> this is where, and this is just a guess on my part, still disputed makes me feel like, mm, did the CIA help start that? Stir that up? <laughs> That's... Yeah. Um, the at least 19 soldiers and civilians were killed on the October 19th. The Reagan administration it, uh, launched a military intervention following receipt of 
of a former appeal from help from the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States. In addition, the Governor General of Grenada, Paul Schoon, secretly signaled he would also support outside intervention, but he put a signing of a let, but he put off signing a letter of invitation until October 26. Reagan also acted due to concerns over the 600 medical students on the island and fears of a repeat of the Iran hostage crisis. So, so to give it some historical context, the Iran hostage crisis started in 79. Um, that, uh, and the Iranians turned over those hostages after Reagan took office. Uh, and also there would have been a Beirut bombing, I believe earlier that year. So there was some like, oh, we don't want this to happen again. So you could put some sort of, uh, there's a fair argument to say, oh, there was a, a slight concern. We don't want this to happen again, uh, especially in our hemisphere. So, <clears throat> so the invasion began on the morning of October 25th, two, just two days after the bombing of the, yeah, two days after the bombing of the Marine barracks in Beirut. So that might have, some people say that's why Reagan was like, the hell with it, we're going. Um it consisted of 1st and 2nd Battalions of the U.S. Army's 75th Ranger Regiment, 82nd Airborne, and the Army's Rapid Deployment, uh, RDF, which is Rapid Deployment Force, the Marines, Army Delta Force, and Navy SEALs, and ancillary forces totaling 7,600 troops, together with Jamaican forces and troops of the regional security system. Um, this is... And this is why they call it... By the way, folks, uh, Grenada has 113,000 people. Yeah. <laughs> a tiny, tiny island. We sent literally the best of the best of every branch of the military. And <laughs> this is this is urgent fury. This is America's like, and again, we hadn't deployed, we hadn't deployed combat troops since Vietnam. So me, this also makes me feel like, well, we lost Vietnam. That's never happening again. So we're going to just dump yeah, everything. We, we, we lost Vietnam. The, Reagan was probably like, we lost Vietnam. Then this pussy Carter came in and he didn't do anything. And now it's time to show we can blow some shit up again. Yeah. That, that's what this feels like. So find me a fucking Marxist somewhere I can bomb. <laughs> there's there's got to be a Marxist somewhere. You know what I mean? They're doing something. Um, so. Uh, Roughly 7,600 troops. Uh, the, the force defeated the Grenadian resistance after low-altitude airborne assault by the Rangers and the 82nd Airborne on the Point Salins Airport at the south of the island and a Marine helicopter in Amphibious Island of the north at Pearls Airport. Austin military's government was deposed and replaced with Schoon, a, government, a governor general, by an interim advisory council until 1984 elections. I'm sure this guy's not Marxist. That's just my guess. Just off the top of my head, I'm going to say that guy's not. So here was the, here's the thing that I was, this is the real secret about this. The actual, I mean, the overthrowing Marxist, we know that's probably the reason why. Here's the thing that I never remember ever hearing in the news. Now I was in like eighth grade or freshman in high school. So I was starting to really get into history and social studies and it was actually becoming kind of fascinating to me. And I had some very good teachers about that. So this, when this happened, I was like, oh, wow. And this is how it was sold to us as Americans is, oh, we have to go liberate this thing. And everyone's like, huh? Okay. But this is the part that I never remember anybody ever saying or talking about. The invasion was criticized by many countries. British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher privately disapproved of the mission and the lack of notice that she re received, but publicly supported. I'm sure private disapproval is like, hey, that used to be our colony. You can't colonize people we used to colonize. Like, right, right. But then this is the key thing that was never mentioned with this invasion of Grenada. The United Nations General Assembly condemned it as a flagrant violation of international law on November 2nd, 83, by a vote of 108 to nine. <laughs> wow. So Reagan clearly violated, violated international law. Nobody, Americans did not give a shit at all. We came up with some, we got to protect I, students. I think that might've been part of the bigger reason was to show as a show of force against uh, the Soviet union and others that 
we can bomb a country. We can attack countries. It doesn't matter if the UN stands us against us. We don't care and we'll do it. Like, yeah, it almost seems like it was just meant to represent the ability of the U S to violate international law and, and destroy countries. I wouldn't doubt it because we had just lost Vietnam. We pulled troops out of Vietnam in roughly 75 Reagan gets sworn in and he's going to be talking tough on, you know, he really ramps up the cold war and the Soviet union is, is being the Soviet union. And they're saying we want to control and dominate everybody. And we're saying, nah, this is, this is, this is like Reagan going, this is what I would have done in the Bay of pigs. You know, this is basically <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. So, um, and this is the Thanksgiving day time. The date of invasion is now a national holiday in Grenada called Thanksgiving day commemorating the freeing of several political prisoners who were subsequently elected to office. Uh, a truth and reconciliation commission was launched in 2000 to reexamine some of the controversies of the era. In particular, the commission made an unsuccessful attempt to find Bishop's body, which had been disposed of at Austin's order and never found the invasion also highlighted issues. This is, this is Wikipedia's whitewashing highlighted issues with communication and coordination between different branches of the American military when operating together as a joint force, contributing to investigations and sweeping changes in the form of the Goldwater Nichols Act and other reorganizations. <laughs> the go Oh God, the Goldwater Nichols Act real quick. Um, uh, made sweeping changes in the United States Department of Defense since the department was established in the National Security Act of 47 by reworking the command structure of the U.S. military. It increased the powers. So this is the other secret. So they said, oh, boy, we had some communication issues with these branches of government, so we need to iron that out, which on, on, on the surface sounds like, oh, okay, that's probably good if you guys are going to be working together. You know, you should all know what they're doing. Um the uh it increased the powers of the chairman of the joint chiefs of staff uh it's about that's time that guy got some power it's about time that guy has been hamstrung for too long Be so before then all they let him do is pick which uh, candy bars they put in the vending machine in the Pentagon. i mean that was it that was it you know what i mean yeah and uh, you know, you know what, people what, were like Zagnut, really? Oh, again, with the Zodi eats Zagnut. Like, can we get a Hershey's in there? Snickers, like the the popular ones, a Twix maybe. Zagnut. What an he was, he was a tyrant. He was a tyrant. He was a he was a Zagnut tyrant. That was Very the Zagnut tyrant. Act yeah. that was passed in 1987. Um, so this guy. So again, as we've learned on this show, this little invasion concocted mainly to get rid of Marxists and was then you, we didn't get international approval, showed the world, like you said, eh, hey, Russia, hey, rest of the world, don't care, we can do what we want. Oh, and by the way, we'll use this as an excuse to centralize military power. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, nope. uh, uh, it in, in, implemented the, gold, the, Goldwater, uh, the Goldwater Nichols Act, also implemented some suggestions from the Packard Commission, which was commissioned by President Reagan in 85. Among other changes, the Goldwater Nich Nichols streamlined the military chain of command, which now runs from president through secretary of Stance, defense directly to combat commanders. This, again, and what this doesn't say is it eliminates any sort of like congressional oversight. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just like the military can do whatever it wants. Um, yeah. Um, by the way, little uh, also another little Thanksgiving tie-in. Uh, Grenada was inhabited by indigenous peoples from South America uh, it, until uh, Columbus sighted Grenada in 1498. Uh, but the Europeans tried many times to colonize the island, but were unsuccessful because apparently the people there didn't want to be colonized. And then eventually uh, French settlement and colonization began in 1649. And they kind of volleyed back and forth with the British on who, who owned those indigenous people. Yep. And then they tried to run their own government and, and then we sent in the Navy SEALs. So that's, uh, so that's pretty much. 
<laughs> so that's the invasion of Grenada and the real story behind it, ladies and gentlemen. Please enjoy that government Thanksgiving secret. <laughs> All right, so I have mentioned this uh, many times throughout the history of our, our show here, but I and I'd always threatened to do a full segment on it, but had not until today. The Pal Memo. Yes, I'm so excited for the Pal Memo. I've been waiting for this, Lee, and I can't wait to learn more about it because it feels like it's going to be a fun memo, like a good memo, like a memo for more parties and more inclusion and people helping each other out, right? Exactly, and more <laughs> Kit, Kat, Kit Kats in the vending machines was mainly what it focused on. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, for those who, li who, who listen to the podcast, you should, th this would make a great partner episode with the trilateral commission because <laughs> these things, these things happened within a few years of each other and both said similar things, but taken together were the shift of the American empire uh, into a, a full far right wing nut job. <laughs> Government secrets, pal, trilateral commission crossover episode. <laughs> on August 23rd, oh, and this was by uh, Jerry Landay, by the way. On mm. August 23rd, 1971, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, which I had never known much about. It sounds very nice. Chamber of Commerce. This is a chamber that helps people buy stuff they need, right? Businesses, yeah. But, you know, and we could do a whole episode on the Chamber of Commerce. But it's it's just corporate America. It's the Chamber of Corporate America ruining everything is what it is. But the uh, U.S. Chamber of Commerce circulated a memorandum by Southern lawyer Lewis Powell Jr. titled Confidential Memo, Attack on American Free Enterprise System. <laughs> Two months later, Powell was appointed to the U.S. Supreme Court. The importance of the Powell Memo can't be overstated. It ignited a right-wing political movement that eventually led to the takeover of the Republican Party by an alliance of fundamentalist religious zealots and pro-corporate extremists who then seized control of the presidency, the Congress, and the federal judiciary. And this is where I branch away from the writer of this article, and I would say, and the Democrats. Uh, yeah. these, <laughs> these forces now own the Democrats as well. So to pretend like this is a, this is a, oh, the Republicans got captured and they took over these entities and the Democrats are still fighting against them is bullshit. Complete bullshit. Um, so few are aware of the critical role played in the political power shift rightward by a prominent Richmond attorney, my hometown, Richmond, Richmond, Virginia attorney and community leader Lewis F. Powell Jr. at the very threshold of distinguished career at the U.S. Supreme Court by distinguished. It's kind of like Darth Vader had a distinguished career. He really did. I mean, he really he's got a lot of medals. He, he really was a good leader. I mean, he was. He motivated people quite well. Uh, Pal, um, Pal, he was a prop. He was a prominent uh, corporate lawyer before he was in the Supreme Court, and he'd found the social turmoil and anti-business mood of the country abhorrent and alarming. And you got to remember, seventy-one. Obviously, you got, uh, you know, all the all the hippie shit going on. The Vietnam War is being stopped by goddamn hippies. Uh, it was there was a lot of, uh, you know, maybe we don't need to have war anymore. That kind of sentiment, a lot of anti-corporate. The expression selling out actually meant something back then. <laughs> yeah. A lot yeah. of things going on. Uh a massive propaganda campaign he wrote was being waged against business. <laughs> management has been unwilling by management. He means basically management of corporate America has been unwilling to make a massive effort to protect itself and the system it represents. Unless the business community acts, Powell warned the capitalist system was not likely to survive. Oh, so, boy. Yeah. He's 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 talking about like that, you know, and this is the same time when and, you know, you can link this to the invasion of Grenada. But uh, at the same time, we were worried that, you know, communism is going to overtake everything and 
And then all these goddamn hippies won't want corporations anymore. And they'll, they'll eat, they'll, the money will be dished out evenly to folks. Ooh. And yeah, they were, goddamn they were, they were long hairs. They were fucking afraid. Um, so his memo uh, or no, the, this is the, the article he, he was referencing as to why he needed to write his memo. It detailed some of the trends that Powell was so alarmed about and mirrored his feelings as a purported pro-liberal tilt. Now, also, people have to kind of analyze the term liberal here. Liberal now, you and I talk about how much we fucking hate liberals, and it's because now liberal represents a group in America that support Democrats, maybe would claim they're left-wing, but are not really left-wing in any policies except... I don't know, not hating gay people or something. Um, but And we, deliberately stand in the way of actual lefty yeah. progressive policies and candidates. Like deliberately block them. Yeah, yeah. So liberal is this thing that you and I hate. But back then it... It may have represented some of that, but it rep but it it represented anyone who didn't want a right wing, far right, you know, government in the United States. It re you know he's also using it to represent anyone who was anti corporate. Whereas nowadays, you and I would uh, you know talk about people anti corporate is largely being left of liberal. So when you hear when I say the word liberal, I think people should realize it. It has a little different meaning than perhaps with the way we use it today. Uh, but so he said, uh, there's been a, purport, uh, a purported pro-liberal tilt by network television news, the, Vietnam, the Vietnamese war, the kids, uh, racism, the black militants. The trouble lay with a liberal ethos, he said, that was leading America astray. Campuses, Powell's manifesto asserted, were greatly dependent on funds generated largely from American business. The media was, after all, also dependent on the advertising revenues of sponsoring corporations. So he's making the argument, and I'll get a little more into it, but that, that business is being torn apart by these left-wing slash liberal forces. And, but business has the ability, if they were to use it more clearly, to destroy all of this. Uh, they could stop television from airing things. They could change college campuses. Business is funding these things. So therefore, the corporate America has, he's basically saying, hey guys, you have the ability with your money, with your power to get rid of all these people and to make America simply a pro-corporate country without anyone questioning that. And here we are today. Black <laughs> Friday's tomorrow, everybody. Get shopping, get the deals out. <laughs> And exactly, I, I, I wouldn't, we wouldn't even be doing this story if, uh, you know, spoiler alert, uh, this, this led to exactly what he wanted and it, and it uh, did what he, what he wanted, which was to purge uh, universities, politics, and political institutions, the judiciary and media uh, of all of these influences being kind of leftward, pro-peace, anti-corporate, anti-profit uh, tendencies. I mean, and this PAL commission really, as you explain this, it ties into almost everything we've ever talked about on the, on the 103 episodes of this show. I mean, really, yeah. it, we've talked about how Hollywood has been co-opted by the CIA and the Pentagon and, and the ruling elites. We've talked about how the colleges have been completely, they used to be this bastion of free thinking and you know, radical ideas and challenging the establishment. They've been bought out. Everyone, the, the media has been completely bought out. The PAL Commission literally figured out what the problems were and said, let's just buy them all out. And they've got, they control all of it. I mean, that's why it's all, it's, that's why we're living in this, this hellscape right now. There was another mass shooting yesterday. We don't even have time to mourn the mass shooting of the, you know, the horrific LGBT, you know, club now there's another mass shooting in a walmart and everyone's going to shop tomorrow and it's just a nightmare and americans can barely pay their bills but they're told to go shopping <laughs> yeah yeah but you know graham other countries don't have those mass shootings so i imagine life is a lot less exciting yeah yeah well they don't have their freedoms yeah their freedoms were taken away because they have good health care and a good quality of life and 
yeah, good social services and people can live and work and have a good time and their whole focus isn't on money and surviving. Yeah, good call. I get it. Um, so here's a quote from uh, his memo. The time has come, indeed it's long overdue, for the wisdom, ingenuity, and resources of American business to be marshaled against those who would destroy it. Powell's blueprint focused on four broad targets of attack. Institutions of higher education, especially students and faculties in the social sciences, the media, the political establishment, centers where public opinion, legislation, and government policies and agendas were shaped, and the court system, which codified and interpreted American law. Um, and by the way, before, because I'll probably forget later when, the, you know, the he says particularly social sciences. And I remember reading a while back about how the, the percentage of people studying business in college versus in university versus social sciences has completely switched. People used to study social sciences. That used to be, they, they, they you know, and, and our arts and sciences. They study arts and sciences. And now people studying like liberal arts and sciences, it's like, it's like 8% of college students now because the American mindset in the American university is now all about how you make a lot of money. Uh, there's no one doing things that they're passionate about that they just find interesting or that they want to further humanity or anything like that. Right. Because we have no, we don't have a society anymore. We don't have a like, Hey, what's best for society? Like you want to make some money. That's fine. But we need a functioning society. We need arts, theater. We need intellectual ideas. We need to, we need to solve some of these problems. No, it's so you go make, and plus, and, and so it is just go make money. And it's also, if you can make it to college, you know, you're going to be graduating with somewhere between 50 to maybe even 200,000 or $300,000 worth of debt. So you better be getting a job that makes you big money. Otherwise, how are you going to pay off that student debt? So there, yeah. you're, you're incentivized to not get into some sort of make the world a better place job because those typically don't pay that well. So you're, you're, you're already incentivizing people to like, just I, me, me, me. It's America's just got to make money. We're all just in this competitive capitalist hellscape where we have to fucking climb over each other to get a dollar. And Hey, that person's hungry and drowning. That's not my problem. I got to go make money like that's. And they, so these, these pal assholes have won. It's kind of like we have to, we, we, we now view life in America without even realizing we view it this way as how do I make enough money to wall myself off from the way society treats me? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really, the, it's really the truth. You either have to make a crazy amount of money so you can't get misused by society and the government, or you've got to move to some country where the cost of living is really low, which a lot of Americans are doing now. I mean, they're just like, that, yeah. Just uh, before I continue, I'm going to hit refresh real quick because people are talking about how my connection is bad. So uh, I'll see if that helps at all. While Lee Camp hits the refresh button, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say hello to everybody over at Rockfin. Thank you for watching at Rockfin. And please hit the like button, ladies and gentlemen. Like, share, so get the likes over 100. And then support what we do at uh, patreon.com slash government secrets where we will... Um, we will be uh, doing our bonus live stream segment uh, for Patreon members exclusively right immediately following the show. So go to uh, patreon.com slash government secrets. Lee Camp, you're back. I'm back. If my connection still sucks, I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. And uh, fuck you, everybody. All right. Yes. You look good, dude. <laughs> look, the, that refresh was the best thing. It was like. I, when, was, when I said I had to go refresh, I went and just splashed water on my face. It's the equivalent of the pal uh memo getting rid of the the filthy long hairs is what it, you just did it's really great yeah 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 he just he basically clicked refresh on american society <laughs> on anyone right. trying to make the world a better place he just refreshed it he's it like people are me. standing up against corporate america have we tried unplugging it and plugging it back in <laughs> <laughs> that works a lot of the times so let's do it all right, so number one, on campuses, liberal professors and their agendas, 
were wielding, quote, enormous influence far out of proportion to their numbers, radicalizing their students to the point of being revolutionaries. And uh, yeah, he was not saying the word revolutionary is a positive thing. Uh, he meant to the point of, you know, thinking that uh, the workers have the power and shit like that. Universities would be persuaded to, this is using, using what they call business, what we call corporate now, using corporate power, corporate money. Uh, the universities would be persuaded to provide, quote, equal time on the college speaking circuit for moderate or conservative viewpoints, moderate being pro-corporate, destroy everything and profit off it yeah. is considered moderate, to adequately represent the views of American business. These same pressures would be applied to, quote, administrators and boards of trustees to correct the imbalance of many faculties, unquote. Such an imbalance that radicals wanting to end war and end poverty and make the world a better place. Like that's, we need to right that wrong and make sure we can still be murdering people for profit and, and profiting off of people's uh, poverty and despair. Yeah, exactly. Um, give thanks, everybody. Give thanks. Yeah, give today. thanks. Three. Uh, oh, sorry. Number two, television and other media. Powell called for, quote, constant examination of the texts of adequate samples of television programs, scholarly journals, books of all kinds, and pamphlets. Incentives would be, I love the term incentives. Uh, what, what are you talking, like hand jobs? What kind of incentives? Were to be applied to induce them to publish and air more writings by the, quote, unquote, faculty of scholars that they would put forward. Businesses were to devote more of the many millions they spent on advertising, nowadays billions, on advertising to inform and enlighten the American people to support the system. I believe that's called propaganda to brainwash <laughs> people. It is. It is complete. And you see, oh God, this was back in the 70s, how effective it is today. Oh, when you see, it's beautiful. just like they, you see people on social media and not just regular, but people with big followings or whatever, defending big corp, big, defending the billionaires, defending the free market capital. Free market capitalism is this wonderful system that always corrects itself and makes everything even for everybody. It's like, you see like, man, you have all been just repeating this pal doctrine propaganda bullshit. Americans will repeat propaganda Every, five times a day without knowing it. I mean, pick a subject, they'll they'll repeat it. I mean, the Second Amendment people always repeat gun lobby, which is they make billions of dollars off of the gun violence in America. They repeat corporate talking points every day. It's amazing, man. So make sure you get to Best Buy tomorrow when the doors open because <laughs> there's going to be a savings. Uh, but I don't know if now's the time, but Graham, you might want to do our spoken word ad before we... Uh... Before we run out of time, uh, I believe it was mattresses. Uh, yes, folks. Um, well, I know it, there's nothing after a long day of talking about how capitalism is evil. How about use government secrets coupon code to get yourself a comfortable mattress where you can <laughs> lay down and read the pal doctrine and think, you know what? I'm glad they wrote that pal doctrine because it really made my life better. And then go to sleep and remember. Gotcha. After a long day of being fucked by the American corporate government, why not treat yourself to a fucking from Pleasure Island adult toys? Uh, you, you <laughs> use the discount code <laughs> government Oops. secrets in the ass. And uh, in order to be light on your feet to trample another human being to save money on a television tomorrow, <laughs> buy some sketchers using the government secrets coupon code to have comfortable shoes so you can kill a human being to save $100 on a flat screen. <laughs> Number three, politics. Pal noted that presidential candidates were daring to express anti-business views. Oh, dear God. Well, let us not forget, two of them really expressed it, the Kennedy brothers, and they all took a couple shots in the head. So they, uh, the Pal yeah. Doctrine really was wanted to stay ahead of that curve. Yeah, and... Although Carter was nothing like the, uh, the the new and improved Kennedy before he was killed, uh, Carter was still not something they really liked. So I think 
I think when Carter was in office, they were they made American business made sure to get him out, and they they kind of were like, how do we make sure that never happens again? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um. So lawmakers were being quote stampeded to support the agendas of consumerists and environmentalists. That's funny that he's using consumerist as a negative connotation, whereas nowadays it's like all corporate America wants is for you to be a consumer. Just be, just shut up and buy stuff. The American businessman had lost his influence within the government, which is, of course, is hilarious. It's like he hadn't lost his, he was still the most powerful influence on the government, just not enough for the likes of Powell, for the likes yeah. of these people who wanted no question to their authority, uh, to the authority of corporate America. Anyway, Powell continues that the American businessman was truly the forgotten man. Powell oh. proposed it. <laughs> it's so hard for those businessmen. They were forgotten. Powell mm. proposed an intensive campaign to enlighten public thinking about business. Even more directly, business had to take direct steps to regain decisive political power within the government. Influence had to be assiduously cultivated, used aggressively and without embarrassment. Yeah, you, you know, one thing that honestly has completely been wiped out and maybe there didn't used to be tons of it, but there was some is shame in extreme wealth or extreme corporate destruction. There used to be a bit of shame. Yeah, you were shamed. And even so, even those like Rockefeller guys, the turn of the, the, the 20th century, evil robber baron guys, but there was some shame. A lot of them, you know, gave money to schools and, and I'm not, I'm not painting them out as these like, Oh, wonderful men. They were, they were pretty horrible people, but there was enough shame. They were trying to cover were, up. They were trying to cover up what they did with charity. Yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. With charity work. But at least they were like, well, I got to give some money back to these. I got to build a school or a church. You know, I got to build a hospital and put my, I want my name on it. So everybody knows how big my dick is, but at least they were like trying, they were doing some now there's no, there's no, there's just like pfft, charity is like, eh, like the only way I'm going to do charity is if I get well, more what, power. The, what, you know, for example, what the Koch brothers call charity was like buying everything and putting their name on it. So like they, they own like Lincoln center in New York. It's like Koch center. And like they, they own the, the hall of human evolution in the Smithsonian. Jesus. <laughs> I guess I saw some news story like, oh, Jeff Bezos is spending money on homelessness. I'm like, oh God, what's he going to spend? Like $5 million, which will not do a, do anything. And that's the equivalent of like me going, I'm going to put $5 towards homelessness. Like it's. I awful. remember he, uh, he, I think he gave $6 million to something with the Australian, when the Australian fires happened and people were acting like that was a big deal. And I calculated it and it's like seven minutes of his income or something like, yeah, seven <laughs> minutes. What it's a like, a, a, you know, max an hour. Um, let's see. So he wanted them to act aggressively and without embarrassment. He said that included broadening the role of the lobbyist for the business point of view. Powell concluded that there should be no reluctance to penalize politically those who oppose us. The And then number four, finally, the court system. Powell's recommendations were to prove especially compelling to movement conservatives and would later be applied with forceful effect. He observed that the judiciary may be the most important inst instrument for social, economic, and political change and took as his model the American Civil Liberties Union, which initiated or intervenes in scores of cases each year. The manifesto concluded business and the enterprise system are in deep trouble and the hour is late. So this is weeks before he becomes a Supreme Court justice. Um, and and it's, it's taken as, it really is taken as a manifesto for corporate America, how to behave, what they need to do. And they got busy, like making this a war that they were fighting along with the Trilateral Commission report. And they went on to take over the universities, the judiciary, the political system, you know, all of Congress. Uh, and and that includes, obviously, the Democrats. So you now have full ownership 
of the entire American system and the media, which is why RT America has just been uh, banned this past March. Um, and it, it's, it's, it's what's happened to the American system. Uh, these two together, pal memo, trilateral committee. I'd say, I'd say the three things could uh, all together. Well, if you include RFK, four things, but would be the assassination of JFK, RFK, pal memo, and trilateral commission. You take those all together, and it's a shift of the American system, where it was headed, where the world was was really headed. Uh, and that shift all took place. I mean, these were all written and out between 10 years of each other. Uh, and then really another 10 to 20 years to implement it all. Um, it's... He, culminating he, go ahead. in the election of bill clinton yeah this uh wow he's a liberal who plays the saxophone and he is the most like pal memo approved guy so then this yep. this shifting after 12 years of reagan and bush policy then we have a guy comes in with the appearance of being a lefty liberal open-minded who just pushes corporate policy and wall street bailouts and all that's, that's the beauty of the manifestation of this pal memo and the trilateral commission. What you're talking about is now we have people like Bill Clinton and Obama who yep. look like they're these crazy radical lefties that just, and because of that, they dupe sucker liberals and people who think they're lefties into voting against their own interests because, oh, it's a it's a black man or it's the first female president or whatever. And they're going to do horrific corporate Wall Street, uh, take away our our, you know, our rights, expand the surveillance state, <laughs> let corporations do whatever they want. Yeah. It's so brilliant. You see how when, the, when you see this plan that was hatched in, the, like you say, in the late 60s, like. Yep. And. Uh, to fit Biden in there, uh, he I, I know all the woke people were excited to have our first all timer president. And <laughs> also, uh, he's been the same, pretty much the same throughout this about as far right wing as you can be and still call the Democrat. Uh, but in the earlier years, like when he ran for president in the 80s, I know he dropped out because of plagiarism, but he wasn't doing that well anyway. Uh, it it wasn't feasible yet to have a Democrat that was just completely and utterly pro corporate uh, until then you had Clinton and Clinton was the big shift. Yep. Yep. Um, so let's see if I should read. He said since 1972 and continuing to the present conservative foundations also heavily underwrite scores of institutes and policy centers that operate along the general lines proposed in the Powell memo. These agitprop operations are modeled on the Heritage Foundation, include the Manhattan Institute, Cato Institute, Citizens for Sound Economy, National Association of Scholars and Accuracy in Academia, uh, Brent Basel's Media Research Center. Uh, for sheer scale and mass, the action front of the radical right is unprecedented in American history. And this guy wrote this thing in 2002, so I don't know if he has... Uh, you know, if if he now sees that the the Democrats are part of this as well, but really, it's it's all one thing now. Yeah, it's all one thing. <laughs> it's literally all one thing. It's like when you and you think it's different, and it's like when you find some like, oh, look at this really good like organic vegan salad dressing or whatever and then you find out they're owned by craft foods or so you know what i mean just like it's just and it's just ground up cheetos it's just liquefied cheetos it's liquefied cheetos and it's wow it's just really and you think it's some you know it's called organic natural farm springs or some shit like that but it's just made in the same craft yeah, natural um, farm springs yeah whatever it's got some you know waterfall fields you know water <laughs> waterfall fields natural grains of uh, gluten-free uh, vegan oats farm and then it's just made like in 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 the same facility that like makes siren gas or some shit like that it's just <laughs> awful uh in the facility we make agent orange and a great vegan orange juice that oh, it's you great. have as well. 
uh, does say on the box, traces of Agent Orange may be found. <laughs> this, this was made in a facility that also makes <laughs> peanuts <laughs> and Agent Orange. Tree nuts and napalm is, uh, is also processed <laughs> in this facility. Ugh. But it's organic. It's farm to table napalm. That's why I like it. So it's, yep. it's good. I love napalm hearts on a salad. It's, it's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> oh happy thanksgiving everybody i hope you're having family and friends over and eating some napalm hearts um just look around your dinner table and know every piece of food on there is a lie um <laughs> but enjoy it so uh folks we're gonna do an extra segment at uh, patreon.com slash government secrets folks this is been Sorry, uh, I, I will hype what we're a couple of things we're going to talk about. Ooh, ooh, there might teaser. be uh, a, a reference to the assassination of JFK. There might be some discussion of the uh, beginning of the FBI crime lab. And uh, there might be some discussion of a massive clothing factory fire. And I'm going to give you uh, a how to make a vegan stir fry for Thanksgiving <laughs> recipe. That's what I'm going to do. So he's going to he's going to tell us about his Beyond Agent Orange chicken. <laughs> <laughs> to bring it all back, I like a good callback that ties us to the first words of the podcast. I love it, Lee. A through line. It's a beginning, middle, and an end. It's a three act play. I love it. This has been Government Secrets, episode 104, ladies and gentlemen. Join us at patreon.com slash government secrets for bonus episodes. All right, buddy. See you there, man. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching. Please go over to, we will be on uh, Patreon in a matter of minutes. So just go to patreon.com slash government secrets. You can sign up right now. We very much appreciate it. Thanks for watching the show, you guys. Thanks for spending your Thanksgiving with us. Uh, and we will see you over at Patreon. Have a great day, everybody.